Welcome to the first video of a series of videos on continuum mechanics. In this first video I will give an overview of continuum mechanics or more generally continuum physics and explain why continuum mechanics is so powerful for describing physical processes in our daily life. Most of you are probably familiar with the term mechanics. Mechanics is a branch of physics in which the forces acting on objects and the resulting motion of these objects are studied. In classical mechanics, the objects are typically assumed to be rigid. That is, they may move in space over time, but do not deform upon acting forces. Here you can see an exemplary animation of some moving particles that do not change their shape over time. In continuum mechanics, objects are not anymore assumed to be rigid, but instead their shape may change over time, as you can see in this exemplary simulation of a solid that deforms under external forces. So, does this mean that classical mechanics is the study of non-deformable objects and continuum mechanics is the study of deformable objects? Well, yes, you could say that, but there is a little bit more to it. Any object that is modeled within the framework of continuum mechanics occupies a certain domain in the three-dimensional space. This domain is often denoted by capital Omega. If a point X, with its three components being X1, X2 and X3, lies within the domain, we say that X is an element of Omega. If not, we say that X is not element of Omega. Points that are right at the border of the domain get a special treatment. We say that they are element of the boundary of omega, which is denoted by partial omega. The crucial assumption of continuum mechanics is that the domain omega is filled by a so-called continuum. But what does this mean? It means that at every point within the domain, the physical state of matter can be defined through a set of variables. One example of such a state variable is the temperature capital T. Because the temperature is defined at each point in our domain, we can define a function T of x. This function, which gives us for any point in the domain the temperature at this point, is called the temperature field. Because the temperature at each point is a scalar value, the temperature field is an example for a so-called scalar field. Besides the temperature, other state variables can be likewise described by fields. Another example of a field is the displacement field u of x. In contrast to the temperature field, the displacement field gives us at each point a vector with the three components u1, u2 and u3. u1 describes the displacement in x1 direction, u2 in x2 direction and u3 in x2 x3 direction. Each of these components u1, u2 and u3 can be interpreted as scalar fields and together they form a so-called vector field. A vector field can best be illustrated by picking a few points in the domain and drawing the corresponding vectors at these points. Here I am illustrating an exemplary displacement field. The displacement tells us to which point each point in the domain is moving when the matter is deformed. Again, the displacement field is a field, so the displacement is defined at infinitely many points in the domain. Only for illustration purposes a finite number of vectors is shown here. Other fields used to describe the state of matter are the strain field epsilon of x and the stress field sigma of x. These two fields are neither scalar fields nor vector fields, but so-called tensor fields. Illustrating a tensor field is not straightforward and will be covered in a future video. There are many more fields that are used in continuum mechanics to characterize the state of matter. More examples include the velocity field, the pressure field, the electric or magnetic potential field, and many more. It highly depends on the physical problem under consideration which of these fields should be chosen as state variables. The fact that the state variables are described by fields in continuum mechanics, that is by functions of space, 
and not for example as a set of scalar values is the most critical difference to classical mechanics or discrete mechanics. In fact, fields are so omnipresent in continuum mechanics that physicists would also call continuum mechanics a field theory. Note that we have here assumed that the fields are functions of space only. For time-dependent problems, the fields can further be considered as functions of time. This means that continuum mechanics can be leveraged to model physical processes in which the physical quantities that we are interested in vary in space and time. This is applicable for every physical process that we encounter in our everyday life, which explains why continuum mechanics is omnipresent in physics and engineering. Continuum mechanics for practical applications can be divided into two branches, solid mechanics and fluid mechanics. Solid mechanics is concerned with the deformation of solid bodies under external influences, while fluid mechanics is concerned with the flow of liquids and gases. Many concepts in solid mechanics and fluid mechanics are very similar. However, the equations that are used to describe the problems and the computational methods for solving these equations can be quite different. In solid mechanics, one typically uses, among others, fields like the displacement field, the strain field or the stress field to characterize the physical state of the system. In fluid mechanics, fields like the velocity field or the pressure field are more commonly used. Note that our matter being a continuum does not necessarily mean that the fields that describe the physical state of the continuum are continuous. There may be sudden changes of the state variables in space. Examples could be jumps in the displacement field, which can be interpreted as cracks in solid mechanics, or jumps in the velocity field, which can be interpreted as shocks in fluid mechanics. So the fields do not need to be continuous, but they must be defined for all points in the physical domain. When trying to understand what continuum mechanics is, it is helpful to take a look at some counterexamples. In solid mechanics, for example, we could model each atom in the solid individually and we could assume that these atoms interact with each other, that is, they attract or repel each other according to certain rules. And we could use this model to simulate the behavior of a solid. Likewise, in fluid mechanics, we could model each particle in the fluid individually and use this model to simulate a fluid flow. Both of these examples are counterexamples of continuum mechanics because physical quantities like the displacement or the velocity are not described by fields as in continuum mechanics. This is because the displacement and the velocity are not defined at any point in space, but only at those points where an atom or particle is present. We have learned that in continuum mechanics the physical state of matter is described by different fields. The general goal of continuum mechanics is to find relations between those different fields within the domain and to further relate those fields to the physical quantities at the boundary of the domain. This is why problems in continuum mechanics are typically described by so-called boundary value problems. Here I am showing an exemplary boundary value problem in continuum solid mechanics. If you are not familiar with all the specific terms in the boundary value problem, don't worry for now. In this series of videos on continuum mechanics, we will go through all of them step by step. For now I just want you to notice that the boundary value problem consists of two different types of equations. Some equations describe relations between different fields over the domain omega and other equations relate those fields to information that is given at the boundary partial omega. Note that many terms in the boundary value problem depend on x. To get a more compact notation, the dependence of the fields on x is often not explicitly indicated in continuum mechanics. In this solid mechanics example, the boundary value problem relates the displacement field to the strain field, 
to the stress field and to physical quantities at the boundary. Given some material properties and sufficient information at the boundary, like for example applied displacements or boundary forces, the boundary value problem can be solved to determine the displacement field over the solid. That's it for this video, I hope you could get some idea of what continuum mechanics is. Detailed concepts are planned for future videos. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like me to produce more videos for this series. Bye!